Welcome to a Taxware video tutorial. Today we'll be talking about the Assets Manager. The Assets Manager is a bit different from other programs in the Taxware family in that it actually interfaces with other programs. Specifically, the Assets Manager links with the individual program, C Corp and S Corp programs, and the partnership program. In this video, we'll be going over just setting up a client and adding some assets. In the other video, we'll go over integrating it with the individual program. To start off, just like any of the other programs, you'll need to make a new client. This is separate from a client that's in your individual program or in the C Corp or S Corp programs. So if you get here from one of those programs and you're not seeing your client, that's because you haven't created one yet. So we'll click line one here, create client. We'll first have to enter a unique identifier for the client, which is their client ID essentially. You can use the same client ID they have in the individual program, or you can make up one that's specific for this client if you're using them in multiple programs. For this tutorial, we'll name this client test. Next, we have the client's basic information, such as their first name, their last name, their ID number, whether it's a social security number or an EIN, and a description of this client. The next option we have here is for interfacing with the program of your choice. In this case, we'll interface with the individual program. You also have some defaults and settings you can check for a particular client. We'll go ahead and leave these alone for this tutorial. We'll click OK. You can now see that the current client is test. So we have selected our client. The next thing we'll want to do is add an asset for that client. So we'll go ahead and click line six for add asset. The first time you add asset for a client, it'll remind you of the asset numbering system. Basically that you can have different departments if you want. It's a way you can organize the assets if there's many assets that your client may have. We'll click OK. We'll put in the description of the asset. We'll put in the cost of the asset and the date placed in service. You'll notice immediately it has the recovery year. Since this is the 2016 tax year, the recovery year is one. We'll click OK. Because we are interfaced with the individual program, it now brings us the carry forward table. This asks us which schedule the asset is for. So for instance, if this was for a rental, we can put in the first schedule E, the second schedule E, etc. We'll go into this a little bit more when we get into that in the next video. For now, we'll just say this is for the taxpayer's first Schedule C. We'll click OK. Next, we have the asset category. There are many options here, so make sure you know which category your asset is being depreciated by. In this case, I'm just going to pick five-year makers. Next, we have the state asset category, so we'll go with five-year makers again. So now this brings us to the asset data menu. Here we can edit information we've already put in, like the description, the cost, or the tax carry code. We can also edit the date acquired and the categories. We can see here that the cost was 2000, so the basis for this year is 2000 because it's the first recovery year, and that for the five year makers, it's going to be taking 400 current year depreciation. If you were using the 179 rules and you wanted to take all of it in the first year, you can go here to section 179, type in the amount that you're going to be 179ing, and push enter. And you can see that the current depreciation left but the used 179 special allocation has gone to 2000. We can do the same thing with the state by going into the state section, putting in 2000 and pushing enter. And you can see now the current depreciation is zero, but the amount that's been 179 is, is 2000. So we'll click okay. Once you've added an asset, you can always make changes to that asset later by going into line seven, changes to assets. We can see here that we have our deep fryer. So we can double click on that to open up the data menu again, and we can make changes again. For instance, maybe we needed to make this a listed property. So we can choose that. This isn't a listed property, but you have that option to do so here. So I've added another asset here, but I've accidentally made a mistake and this should have been for another client or it wasn't supposed to be in here. If you ever need to delete an asset, simply click on the asset, hit the delete key on your keyboard, and then you can click yes to delete the asset. Make sure you wanna do this as this is permanent. Let's go ahead and close out of the asset view. One important thing to note is the year end update. The year-end update you'll only do once a year, as the name implies. What this does is it goes through all of your assets and rolls them over to the next year. So if you've noticed, we've made this for 2016 was the date acquired, so it was year one of recovery. And we can see here that our client is 2016 tax year. If we click year-end update, you'll get a warning that says this is irreversible, so make sure you really want to do this. If we click OK, we can see that our client has moved into the 2017 tax year. And if we go to changes to assets and pull up our asset, we can see that the recovery year is now two, that there's not gonna be anything taken because we've already taken the 179.
We also have some miscellaneous options. You can back up the client to a new location. You can move clients to the current year data storage and a number of other things. That concludes our overview on the Assets Manager. If you have further questions, feel free to email us at support at taxwaresystems.com or give our technical support line a call at 1-800-877-1065. We'll see you in the next video and thank you for choosing Taxware.